guys, it's me again, Zoe, and if you're new here, hello and welcome. I am a second year medical student studying in the Philippines, and I took my undergrad or my pre-med at De La Salle University, Manila. I took a Bachelor of Science in Human Biology. I graduated just last year with two awards, the Summa Cum Laude Award and the Jose Rizal Honor Society Award. And I decided to share my note-taking strategies and tips with you. So the first tip would be to adjust your note-taking strategy depending on the subject or the lecturer. For subjects such as math, I would always write handwritten notes and I would write a detailed step-by-step -step basis on how I solve the equation because sometimes when you're looking over your notes and you see an equation, you'd be like, hmm, how did I solve this again? How did I answer this? What did I do? How did I do this? So when I write down my notes in subjects like math that involve equations, I make sure that I write a step-by-step -step basis on how I got the answer. And I don't just write um, step one, like the mathematics of it. I don't just write the numbers and the equation as a flow. Sometimes I even give myself some reminders as to how to how to solve it. Like sometimes I'd be like, hey, the sign depends on it being a product or a reaction or hey, don't forget to write this on the calculator. So it's really good to give yourself these notes on to how to solve these equations. Like you have to be able to teach yourself one day if it's future you who's going to be reading your notes. And I feel like it's very good to invest on giving yourself these reminders on how you solve the equations or how you understood how to approach the answers because it will definitely help you when you're studying for the NMAT. So I really invested with teaching myself through my notebooks and reminding myself how to achieve equations through these notebooks. So don't only write the examples, don't only write the equations, but give yourselves mental reminders or handwritten reminders of how to solve it. And usually I do this with color coded and here you can see I wrote them in blue. For subjects that involve um, concepts such as religion, human arts, and history, here I wouldn't focus so much on writing verbatim. Instead, I would focus on writing the main ideas or the key points or the words that they want to be defined. So how do you recognize that something is important? My strategy so that I would really pay attention is I would sit in front. Maybe some people are not comfortable sitting in front, but I believe sitting in front has really helped me develop a relationship with my teacher and made me focus more in class and made me less shy to ask questions because I don't look at the people behind me anymore and I just focus in front of me. So yeah, it's very important to be actively engaged in your classes so that you can make better notes. However, sometimes the key ideas may not be enough. For example, I had this um, religion class where my professor was known for giving um, identification type questions and he was very strict on your definitions or even the way you capitalize words. Like for example, in my notes here, I'd say oral tradition with a big T started with Jesus. So if it's oral tradition with a small t, that's not the answer. So sometimes some subjects may be really key to detail and you need to know which subjects are like that. And that's why I'm really grateful in La Salle, we have this forum where you can talk about your professors and you can ask students who have had these professors about them. So another key that a lot of people don't usually talk about is when you want to make effective notes, sometimes you have to adjust them also based on your lecturer if, you want to, if your goal is to score high. So sometimes you need to adjust what kind of information does your lecturer usually ask. Are they a more enumeration type of question? Are they more um, essay type of question? So this is how you adjust your note taking strategy because you don't want to put so much effort but apparently all your exams are just essay based. So you could have been just writing concepts and main ideas and comprehensions compared to strict verbatim definitions. So here it's good for you to research on your professors. Now for the science subjects such as botany, zoology, comparative anatomy, and histology. Now here, the key secret that I use is muscle memory and active recall. So how do I do this? So of course, I would have a separate notebook. I would have a notebook where I have my definition of terms, my notebook where I've already written down what I think were important, and I've already coded as to what I deemed were keywords, which I think will possibly be answers to exam questions. So I do that by bolding them or underlining them. And so it becomes so quick for me to search what are the important words. So now that I've identified what were the important keywords or what I think will be the labeled parts in the slides that will be asked, I then get a separate sheet of paper. And in this separate sheet of paper, I start to write down all of these keywords and I write them down with no definitions beside them. It's just all the answers. When I'm doing this, I'm not only just writing it down passively because I believe passively writing will not really help you make those connections more. Before I write them down, I 
start to describe this word. I speak out loud and I feel like when I talk out loud that helped me a lot. Like I'm conversing with myself which sounds crazy but when I speak it out loud I feel like the more senses that I use to get information the more it sticks to my head. So for example I'd be writing primitive streak. So when I write down this word I start to define it. What is the primitive streak? What do I think will be the questions to the primitive streak? What kind of exam question will come out? Which slides will be labeled as a primitive streak? When I see a slide, will I be able to know to identify this primitive streak? And then when I believe that's when I believe that I can say yes to all of these questions, or if I know how to answer all these questions, I then move on to the next keyword that I write. I write Henson's node. So now I go again, I ask myself again. And then that's how I really think about when I start writing all of these keywords one by one. So then I'd have a master sheet filled with all of the things that I think are possible answers to exam questions. So after I have this master sheet, this is where my muscle memory practice comes into place. So this is a little bit passive, but I feel like it really works with my works for me because I feel like sometimes I'm really, really, okay, not sometimes, most of the time I'm really bad at spelling. So what I did to solve that problem is I would write the word in a separate sheet of paper several times. I'd write it probably five, 10 times until I believe that not only does my brain memorize how to spell it, but also my hands. And trust me, I've had so many exams where I'd be so surprised that I'd see the question, I'd know the answer, and my hand will just be writing on its own because it already memorizes how to spell something. And sometimes I don't even doubt it anymore. Like if my brain's like, isn't it an I before an E or an E before an I? And I'm like, no, 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 your hand knows what to do. And sometimes it would really surprise me. My hand would just be writing the word out completely. All right, so my next step is to create your note-taking strategy. So some people like to have pre-lecture notes, lecture notes, and final notes, but for me, I wasn't really the type to advance study. Instead, I was the type to be actively engaged in class. And sometimes it might be annoying to some people, or sometimes maybe you'd be too shy to be active in your classes, but it's really, really, really something I feel like you should develop like it's something that you should be more confident about because the more questions you ask it allows you to make connections more in your brain because you're actually trying to dig in deeper you want to comprehend what your lecture is talking about and not only does it help you learn better it also helps you develop your relationship with your professor because i'm pretty sure that many professors out there see effort and they like effort and most of the time effort gets rewarded anyway so now let's go back to how I write my notes or what's my note taking strategy. So I had first a raw lecture note. So I would have these notes that would be mostly on these yellow pieces of paper. So it would be like a messy collection of my notes or sometimes I'd write them directly on my notebook. It depends on what the subject is. I really, really try my best to be actively involved, engaging parts of my brain when I'm writing down notes, instead of just passively writing what the professor is saying. Because sometimes I believe this is a mistake that most students make, is sometimes you end up just writing what he says verbatim, or sometimes you're just writing definitions, or you're just copying what's written on the PowerPoint without actually absorbing that information. So how do you actually absorb information? You make connections. Before you write it down, make sure you understood what he said. And don't feel shy to raise your hand and ask, to go back to what he just talked about if he didn't understand it because that would really help you keep information in more. So you really need to see if you comprehended something. And maybe if your lecture is fast paced and you don't feel like writing a question, sometimes the thing that I would do if I wouldn't ask questions, I'd put a little star or an asterisk and then I would write down search this later or study this later or read more about this. And so when I look at my raw lecture notes later on, when I write my final notes, I can see that, oh, I need to add more stuff here. The good thing about creating final notes is it increases the number of exposures you have to that piece of information. And usually the key to putting something into your memory is increasing the number of times you are exposed to this. This is why some people opt to use flashcards or apps such as Anki because it really increases the number of times you see the piece of information. And the more times you see the piece of information, the more likely it is to stick to your brain. So that's why I like um, re-putting my notes. It takes a lot more time, but for me, that really worked for me because how I did it is I didn't rewrite it passively. Like I didn't just copy paste, like writing it down. I made sure I was actively writing it down. I was teaching myself. So one technique that I found really useful in writing down my notes is role-playing. 
huh, role playing? Role playing in a sense that I would be a teacher and my notebook will be the student. My notebook is literally a student with a blank slate who knows nothing about the topic. So how am I supposed to teach the student about the lesson? How will I make this student understand the topic? So that's the difference between passively writing, rewriting your notes and actively writing your notes. So when I do this, I make sure that I feel like I'm teaching this student. So I'm writing down things and I'm writing down how to understand things better, how to comprehend things, how I understood things, what were my mnemonics, I write them all down. Because what's really great about this is your final product will include your understanding your lecture notes, and your approach to the topics. And what's great about that is it's going to be super helpful when you study for your NMAT or your National Medical Admissions Test because you don't need to look for extra resources online anymore or you don't need to search things, how to do things anymore or watch another video because you already have a written down guide on how to approach equations. And trust me, this notebook I'm helping you right now was the key to saving me in chemistry and NMAT. I really can't stress this. It's really important to act like a teacher and your notebook as your student. Be actively engaged when you're rewriting your notes. And now we move on to the next tip. So sometimes you need to know when to annotate. So I believe that in some subjects where the lesson may be too long and taxing, I think that sometimes I use these subjects to annotate. And these are usually when the professors are kind enough to give you their lecture slides or their PowerPoint slides. So what I do is I would also ha still have the same strategy. I would have my raw lecture notes on the slides. So I would write down everything that I found were important during the lecture. I would underline what were emphasized and I would put asterisks on things that I want to study on later. That's why you'd see that in some of these, I would really like have like more written information because this is what I did now with my final notes. In my final notes, I started to cross-reference again and add information that I feel were missing in the lecture and I feel will help me more understand things because again, how are you supposed to approach learning? I told you, act like a teacher and your notes are your students. And now how do I annotate for subjects that have long readings, such as lab manuals and stuff? So what I do is I would have here all of the things that were written, like the key information, and then I would put asterisks again on what were the important words. Again, it's like what I did a while ago where I created a master sheet of information. Here I started listing down what were the important keywords. So I'd have all of this in each of the pages. I'd have what do I think were the keywords? What do I think were the questions that might be asked? And then I'd color code them again based on I feel what is what are the importance. And then so later on when I make my master sheet, I just need to look at all of these asterisks or all of the colored words. And that's what I write down. And so yeah, there these are some strategies that you could use. So again, these note-taking tips are tips that I use for pre-med. Of course, my studying strategy and note-taking tips have totally changed when I reached med school and they're continuously changing. But I feel like in pre-med, you have enough time to be on the study grind. You can place a lot of effort during your pre-med because your topics aren't as comprehensive as they are in medical school. And I believe once you develop this discipline to actually write notes, you will carry over this discipline when you're in med school. And trust me, you're gonna need a lot of discipline in med school and perseverance when you're trying to comprehend your crazy load amount of work. So yeah, anyway, I hope you learned something. And if you made it this far with my video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe, like the video, and join me in my journey as I go towards becoming a doctor. Bye.